Hi guys and welcome back to part three of my five part video series on lab 7.1.4.9 how to identify IP version 4 addresses. This video covers part two step one where we are asked to identify IP version 4 addresses by the type of address each one is. Those are network, host, multicast, and broadcast. The crazy part of this lab is that Cisco throws in a type of addresses we have not yet discussed in the lab thus far, which is the multicast address. Odd thing, multicast addresses are not part of our network at all. What? How is this, you say? You may remember learning about class full addresses. Way back when IP version 4 was created, IP addresses were categorized by class. There were six classes. They were named letters A through F. Three of these address classes represented usable address addresses and three were special and reserved. Each class got its slice of the 4.3 billion addresses, but much like classes of wealth and humans, every class gets a different size slice of the whole pie. Class A addresses slivered off half of the pie all for itself. In total, there were 128 networks created, which occupied the range of the entire 4.3 billion addresses, which started at 0, 0, 0.0.0.0, 0 .0, and it went all the way through 127.255. 255, 255, and that represents about half of all of the IP addresses that are available on the IP version 4 network. And so that was class A. All right, class B addresses are half the size of what class A was. So they represent a quarter of the entire pie of numbers. And for class B, the networks were a lot smaller, but there were more of them. So every network had less hosts in the network, but there was a whole lot more networks in class B. And the class B range goes from the next number up from our the bottom of our class A. And so that is 128.0.0.0 through 191.255.255.255. Okay, now the last class that we have to talk about today when we talk about our uh, three classes of usable uh, that were usable by devices. Um, and so the class C network was again half of what class B was. So about an eighth of the pie. These networks were many, many, many a number, but they were very small by today's standards. So each network consisted of only 254 devices. Um, and that is not a whole lot of computers when you look at the size of our networks today. Back in 1990s, when uh, IP version 4 was created, that was a pretty good sized network. All right, so the class B, I mean class C range, goes from 192, one number up from that 191, .0.0.0, and it goes all the way through 223.255. Two Now, there might be a few people out there that say, hey, wait a minute, those ranges aren't exactly right. This is gross or bulk numbers. There are a few exceptions in there where there's a slice of the class A, those 127s, that are reserved for a, a different special purpose. Um, and so, yes, this is the, the gross numbers, but yeah, there are other people out there that will throw a fit and say, hey, you're not quite right. Well, this is the, the gross numbers. This isn't the exact perfect figure. Okay, so 
here is where the storyline relates to our exercise for today. Class D, I told y'all that you know, there were six classes, three of them had, um, you know, were for assignables, and then there were three more, and those three others got to fight over the scraps that were left of the IP version four space, but those weren't designed to have individual devices assigned to them, so it's okay that they're much, 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 much smaller. All right, so class D is the first special class of addresses that we're gonna talk about, and I will save E and F for a later lecture. Um, so this is special because it was decided to use this network for a type of address that we call a multicast address. So the class D is our multicast class. All right, um, and a multicast address is assigned to any or is not assigned to any one computer or device. And what makes it special is that many devices can belong to a single multicast address. And many devices can have multiple multicast addresses that they also belong to. Um, but these addresses are owned by no one device. So I like to think of it as a country club for computers. If you belong, you're gonna receive messages from the sender, um, but if you don't, you're not going to read those addresses, those messages at all. All right, so the multicast range starts at the where C left off, where class C left off, and those start at 224.0.0.0, and they go clear through 239.255.255. Okay, so that means if the address contains the numbers 224 through 239 in the first octet, that it is a multicast address. So if we look at our list of IP addresses, um, we can see if it is a multicast address and mark it as such based on that one criteria, no calculations involved. So if I'm looking through this list of IP addresses that they give us, I will see um, there might be a couple of IP addresses where the number is between that range of 224 and 239. And so if I see those addresses, all I have to do is go ahead and mark those out as a multicast address. All right, and that's it. That's those two are done. All right, not too bad. Now for the rest of the addresses that we have not yet identified. For these addresses, we're going to have to go and um, and actually do our network calculations. Potentially, we have to go to the next step and look and see if it's a broadcast address. And if it's not a broadcast address, then we're going to say it's a host because we've already identified who the multicasts are. All right, so I'm going to get a new page here. We're going to pick an IP address. Again, I'm going to pick one at random. I'm not going to pick something that is already in your list of IP addresses so that you actually have to go and do the work. Sorry guys, this isn't a cheater video. It's a teaching you how to do it. That's more valuable to you than giving you answers. Okay, so the IP address I'm going to pick, I'm going to do 192, 168, seven, woo, what happened there? Seven, dot, Two sixty one. Nope, not two sixty one. That's not a valid IP address, is it? Two twenty one. There we go. All right, and this one I'm going to give a subnet mask of twenty five. Okay. So again, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my twenty five number ones, and those are representing my subnet mask. So this number represents my subnet mask. 
I want to identify those first. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then we're going to fill out the rest of the octet with zeros. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, after we do that, again, we're going to take our IP address that we're given and we're going to convert it into binary form. So binary for 192 is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so two ones, six zeros. All right, our 168, when we convert it out, that's going to be a 1, 0, 1, zero one zero 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 okay now for our seven all right so seven is going to be zero 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 now we were at our eights place so there's our eights and we gotta put a four a two and a 1. 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. Okay, now we've got to do 221. Okay, 221, when I convert it into binary form, is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Isn't that a neat number? Okay, so now I've got to figure out what my network address is and so I'm going to convert or I'm going to and these two addresses together and so let's go through that process I'm going to just kind of cat fast forward through it so here's my one one zero 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 okay one zero one zero one zero 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 okay next octet is zero 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 because all of those are zeros and ones then I've got one last zero and one so I've got another zero then one and one one and one one and one okay so there's my third octet now my last octet it's going to be 1 and 1 is a 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1 and 0, 1 and 0, 0 and 0, 1 and 0. Okay, so my network address is 192.168.1.1. If I convert this into binary or into decimal from binary, then I get 128. Okay, so now I'm going to compare my network address to the address that I started with. If they are the same, then this address right here is a network address. If they're not the same, then it's not. And so then we have to keep on looking. So we haven't eliminated anything yet because 128 does not equal 221. So let's keep on looking. Okay, so our next step is we had to take the bits that were our host portion in our subnet mask and reference those bits in our network address. And all of those bits needed to be converted into ones right so we would have one two three four five six seven ones okay now the rest of our network the network portion of our address needs to come down just like it was so 
there's our one and then I'm going to start over here at the first octet alright so now I've copied that down again I'm going to convert this series of really horribly written numbers back into um, decimal form and so this first octet is 192 my second octet when I convert it back is 168 my third octet is a 7 and my fourth octet notice now that my fourth octet for this particular example is a 255 so this address right here is our broadcast alright so that is our broadcast address sorry I ran out of room so now I compare this address that I just got is this equal to the address that I started with and so 221 does not equal 255 still so it's not our broadcast so we already said it was not our network address and it's not our broadcast address well we only had three more choices after we eliminated multicast from our rules alright so the first thing we did was we eliminated multicast based on its range the only three left at that point was network broadcast or host so if it's not network and it's not broadcast the only option that it has left to be is this is a host address okay hope you enjoyed that video I will record another one with a different example so that you can see it hitting as a network or a broadcast address as well stand by